In Creo Parametric, a circular reference happens when one component is both the parent and child of another component. I was actually filming another video and all of a sudden I noticed that I had a circular reference and I thought, hey, this would be a great opportunity to show the viewers how I would deal with a circular reference. First, how do I know there is a circular reference in the model? If you take a look at the notification center, there's a little yellow flag. If I click on that, it tells me that, hey, I have one notification, a circular reference. I can open the notification center, but this pretty much just tells me the same thing. There's not really too much value of doing anything in here. I know that there is a circular reference in the model just from the flag and hovering over and seeing there it is. Oh, well, I had to click on it, but anyhow, one circular reference. Also, if you take a look in the model tree, there is a little yellow triangle over to the left of the top line in the model tree. And if I hover my mouse over the yellow triangle, it tells me that I have one circular reference notification in and below items. I also noticed that for some reason in this particular assembly, they've set all the features to read only. I am going to take care of that by right clicking and choosing clear read only. If you're asking why someone would do something like this, by setting everything to read only, it makes this model, all the different components in here, not regenerate, but we still got a circular reference. Let's take a look at fixing that. So now that I know that there is a circular reference in the model, how do I find out where it is? Well, you can use the reference viewer. If I right click right on the top node of the model tree, I can go to information and then reference viewer. You also have access to the reference viewer in the ribbon. If I click on it, here I can see that, okay, there's a missing model. Well, that's not good. At some point, I should take care of that. But to figure out where the circular reference is, you go to the paths tab. And here we can see that we have circular path one. If I click find circular path, I can see if, you know, maybe there were any other circular references that weren't picked up. But then I can click on circular path one and we can see that, okay, there is a circular reference involving the part called head tube brace R, R for right. That's what this little symbol over here means, that you have a circular path. If you click on it, well, kind of just shows you again where the circular path is, but flipped it to the other side. What will really help me out is if I right click on the component and choose display full path, and that'll help me see where we have a circular reference. So this is the head to brace R, and it is pointing up at frame main assembly. Yep, that makes sense. But also it is related to head to brace left. So these are the two components that are involved in it. It's what you can see with those little arrows pointing to one another. Another way that you can choose is if you right click on it, uh, you can go to info and, you know, like reference info, and it'll give you sort of the same information, but in a text format. Now I know where the components are. Let's investigate those two components. Let me close out of there, close the reference viewer dialog box. And here are the two components in the model tree, the L component. Okay. I can see where it is. And then we have the R component. Okay. Left and right. And the strange thing about this, if I take a look at these two parts, okay, this is the left part, kind of looks like the Star Trek insignia there. Let me close that. Let's go back to the other one, the one on the right. Let's open it. These two parts are geometrically identical. This is a little pet peeve of mine. Why would you have two separate parts for them when you would manufacture them the same? If you have two separate names, they're going to show up as two different items in the bill of materials. I know that you can use EBOM, MBOM transformation so that they both reference the same WT part, but this is just a little bit unnecessary. Let's take a look at some more information involved with this. Let me expand over here. Okay, this component is a mirrored merge. I assume it is a mirrored merge of the component that appears below it in the model tree. That's a little nutty. 
usually the mirrored component should appear after this one. But one of the main things that I want to take care of is the fact that this component, this component, they're the same. I really don't need to have a part with a mirrored merge in there. Let's also take a look at the constraints that are used to assemble this. If I hit the edit definition button, okay, cannot redefine this feature. Well, that's weird. Let's go to the component below it and I'm going to choose edit definition. This is using the default constraint. How is this using the default constraint? I want to investigate that while I am at it. So let's click out of here. Let's go to that component and open it in its own separate window. Let me turn on my datum plane. Oh, my datum plane display is on. Let me turn on the display of the default datums in the model tree. I can see that this component is located in space off from the default datum planes, yet I only have a protrusion and a round in here. Let's go to the protrusion. By the way, because it's called protrusion ID 23, I can tell that this model is pretty old. It predates Pro Engineer Wildfire 1.0. So we're talking about this is a model probably from the 1990s. Let me edit definition of protrusion ID 23. Now I will go to the placement tab. It's got an internal sketch. And that makes sense. I mean, back in Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier, you were probably doing all internal sketches. And I can see how this geometry was created. If I go to the references button, I can see that the references for this part are a copy geometry feature, but a copy geometry feature in another model. Now, personally, I would prefer to break these references. I don't think that they're necessary to have external references for a component that is this simple, but I understand what they're trying to do. Hey, if we change the skeleton in the assembly, then this component will update automatically. So whether you break these references or not, that is up to you. Let me cancel out of here. But now I know why this component is located at the default location. Let me cancel out of the extrude as well. Personally, what I would prefer to do, let me go back to the assembly. Here is the skeleton model. Right now it is hidden. I can make it visible. The skeleton model, if I expand in here, here it has a copy geometry feature probably to the missing model. If I right click on there, I can go to information reference viewer. And lo and behold, yep, the copy geometry feature is looking at the missing model. I don't know, maybe I might want to edit definition of this feature. And it says, hey, it has an external dependency. You know, you could redefine it and remove the external references if you want. But, you know, maybe I can see if I can just at least change the update control from automatic update to maybe manual update or manual update with notification. You know, at least do something in here to take control of that copy geometry feature. So not the cleanest modeling, but really now I'm kind of getting sidetracked from the real problem that I want to deal with. Let me go back to those two components. And first off, here we have the left brace. Well, to get rid of the circular reference, let me hide the skeleton. I think it's giving me some stipling in the model. I'm just going to delete this component to begin with because I can reassemble the component on the other side. Let me choose the delete button. And here we say, okay, it's got a hey, some kind of problem going on here. If I go to the options button, no local children, external children. Okay, it's that mirrored merge feature. Let's just click the okay button out of there. And we've gotten rid of the component that is causing the circular reference, it's gone away. But I still need this component over on the other side. The first thing that I'm going to do though, I am going to replace this component because again, to me, it is nutty that we have separate components for left side and right side, but they're geometrically similar. So I'm gonna right click on here and choose the replace selected component. And here it's listed. I'm going to replace it by a copy and I'm going to call my new part just head to brace. And click the OK button. 
Again, I just don't like the implications of having separate manufacturing paths for two parts that are geometrically similar. And I want to assemble this over on the other side. Let me figure out how I'm going to assemble it. I can see that I will probably use a coincident constraint and two distance constraints. Let me take a couple of measurements. I will go to the analysis tab. I'm going to measure a distance. Let's measure the distance from this surface. I can measure it to the edge, but let's just be correct and grab, ah, come here, filter. Filter down to surface. That way I just make sure I'm measuring exactly what I want. Okay, 35 millimeters. Great. Let me use the right mouse button to clear the selections. Now let's measure from this surface to, put my mouse over here, tap the right mouse button to get query select. And that surface okay five i can remember those numbers 35 and five let's now assemble that same component over on the other side let's go to the model tab hit assemble keyboard shortcut is the letter a i have not saved that copied part yet so let me go to in session and let me start typing in the name of the component and Head to brace. This is the part that I want to assemble. Where the heck are you? Okay, there it is. It's attached to my mouse based on a config.pro option that I have. So now to assemble it, let's pick this surface and let me tap the right mouse button to get the back surface. Right now I'm getting a distance constraint. You can double click on the 3D notes and change it to coincident. And that's good. I can start adjusting it into place a little bit if I want to with the 3D dragger. And if the 3D dragger then starts getting in your way as you are assembling components, you can turn its display off. Be aware though, if I turn off the display of the 3D dragger, the next time I go to assemble a component in my session, it is still not going to be visible. So I usually like to turn it on right at right before I hit the check mark when I'm done assembly. Let's define a new constraint. I'm going to get to that option from the right mouse button. And the new constraint will be from this surface to this surface. And I got a coincident constraint. Let's change that to distance. The only reason I didn't use a 3D node, I'm not sure which one is the one I want. And let's drag this down over here just to adjust it a little bit. Let's change that to 35. That is good. Let's see. Now I need another constraint. Let me right click and choose new constraint. And it'll be the distance from this surface to, once again, I'm going to query select to get the thin surface hidden behind the other one. And once again, I get a coincident constraint. Let's change that to distance. And I'm just going to drag it a little bit to get it approximately where I want then type in the correct value and hit the check mark. So now let me take a look here it's at the bottom of the model tree. Let me grab it and drag it close to its brother. And there we have the two brace components. They have the same name. It's going to show up as two in the bill of materials. That's what I want. And you'll notice the one that was already in here has a component assembled to it, but there's no kind of hole in this part for mounting so that's why i didn't have any kind of issue with replacing with a copy so i have the same part on both sides who knows maybe they plan on using an assembly level feature for the mounting location of the frame bushing that's right below it in the model tree but again that's how you can take care of a circular reference the first step again is figuring out that you have one by looking at the notification center or looking in the model tree then you can use the reference viewer to figure out the nature of the circular reference and can you do that from the paths tab here we have no circular references that is good figure out which components are involved figure out the nature of the circular reference and then get rid of it and again it's usually dealing with external references like that mirrored merge feature that we had in the left hand version of the part.
I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much. Kitty cat, get away.